guys, it's IDW, and today we are going to be adding input and output into our redstone computer, which is now pretty much finished, so yeah. So the first, ah, uh, three, two, one. Hey guys, it's IDW, and today we are going to be adding some input and output into our redstone computer, and after today, it's going to be finished except for debugging, so yeah. <laughs> We are really, really, really close to being finished with the entire series now, so uh, after this it might be a little while because I want to do the debugging all-in-one like big push because the thing about it is that um, in debugging you generally uh, don't want to log off uh, because you're going to like uh, be in the middle of testing something and yeah. So what's generally best is to just take a big chunk of time and just, uh, or come up with a big chunk of time, which uh, I'm still in the process of coming up with because my schedule is so ridiculous. Uh, and you basically just go through it and just uh, go through every single wire and make sure that there's no mistakes going on. So yeah. Anyways, let's talk about this little uh, mock-up of the I.O. that I've built right here that I'm going to be building into up there. So on the bottom here we have user input. Now originally I wanted to have two user inputs but unfortunately uh, when we built uh, this circuit up here, uh, as you can see right here the circuit that sort of takes these things in and sends them onto this bus, I built it uh, kind of forgetting that I wanted to have two inputs and so now it's not designed effectively enough to have to. Uh, I'm going to try to do something fancy though anyways to try to get it so that I can have a second input but for the moment this is just like uh, as good as we might be able to get. So yeah hopefully we're gonna have two inputs but for the moment it looks like we can only do one unfortunately. So over here we've got some basic controls because we are using memory mapped IO. Uh, oh yes this is the output panel right here. But because we're using memory mapped I.O., uh, we, need to, we ha need to have a submit button in general, but uh, it makes it so that the additional like stuff on here uh, that you have to like add in that's like functional stuff is relatively light. Uh, so for instance, we've just got this little submit uh, uh, input button and nothing else really fancy and input needed and on and off and that's pretty much it. So now let's talk about this, because this is actually going to be the clock. And the thing is that I've actually talked already a bit about uh, the fancy way I came up with for actually reducing uh, the clock speed, because the clock speed that we have right now is ridiculous and I just won't ex- Oh. Sorry about that, my Minecraft just crashed for some reason, but anyways, uh, did not lose my train of thought. But the thing is that, uh, if we come back down here, uh, the thing, <laughs> wow, <laughs> that actually threw me off, I thought I was going to be able to keep going, but whatever. Anyways, so the thing is that, uh, we're not always going to be wanting to use all of this memory. Uh, we don't necessarily need it, uh, Technically, it's part of the Turing machine, but whatever. If we don't need a certain section of it, then why shouldn't we just, uh, like, not use it? And that's sort of the mentality going into this, because this memory is, like, extremely slow. Like, every four bits, that's two ticks. Now, unfortunately, this isn't the most effective way to slow it down. Uh, or rather, uh, how could I explain this? Uh, actually, uh, the slowest bit of it isn't the actual process of going down there and coming back. It's uh, the process of going through these uh, decoders right here, uh, because ticks add up really quickly there. Uh, sure, they add up quickly along here, but it's actually in like this that... Uh, Basically what I'm trying to say is it's not going to have as much of an impact as we should hope, but at least it's a bit of an impact. So with this model, we're going to be able to customize which memory addresses we're going to be able to use. And every time uh, that uh, we uh, 
because what we're going to do is we're going to take the clock and uh, what we have going on down here is we just have a bit of uh, what's it called uh, de customizable delay in our uh, overall clock and the reason that we have this is in case we want to cut off a memory address and that's useful if we don't want to use that memory because it's too slow and we just want to make the whole thing a bit faster by doing that so yeah that's exactly uh, why we are going to want to uh, use something like this and it's important to note that uh, every time that we add on a new uh, memory address it's worth two ticks uh, unfortunately repeaters don't have a total of uh, three ticks on them they can go up to four so that would be two and that would be three total uh, what's it called memory addresses lost and I think that this isn't this is actually the wrong amount but yeah so this is actually going to be the clock uh, we're going to come up with some fancy way of uh, uh, actually import uh, input well I can clearly speak today uh, some efficient way of uh, building the clock sort of design that I went over in the last video into this so yeah but anyways, I think that's everything that needs explaining. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and replicate this up there, and yeah, I'll see you guys when I'm done. All right, we are back, and I have just finished off building all of this stuff. It took quite a long time. <laughs> yeah, that's quite an understatement. Uh, this is... This is going to, uh, like, the amount of uh, footage that I already have recorded for just building this is about as long as I usually have off-camera, uh, well, quote-unquote off-camera footage for one of these videos, so yeah. Uh, all in all, it's just really repetitive stuff, but yeah, I'm basically uh, just, there's a few things that we need to add on to this. Uh, for instance, we need to make it so that we have a actual... Uh, save thing up here because we're going to want to make it so that the output is being constantly displayed up here and I still have these on uh, which I should change pretty soon but yeah whatever anyways I'm going to need to add that on but the other thing I'm going to need to do is we aren't going to want to constantly be reading so I'm also going to need to add on a read command down here but the last thing that I need to do is I'm going to try to come up with an effective way, and I talked about this earlier, to actually, uh, when I'm in here, uh, get a second wire coming down here. So something like this. Um, this is actually, that actually works kind of well, but yeah, I'm probably going to have to do quite a bit of messing around off camera, and I'm probably going to go into a different world to try to like come up with an effective way to do to add a second input on, because what we have right here is just completely uh, unoptimal. But yeah, once I finish that, we're going to be moving on to the clock. So yeah, I'll see you guys when we can go on and discuss that. All right, we are back, and as you can see, I have not only managed to add on a second layer, uh, it's actually easier to see right here, but I've also uh, gone ahead and added the, uh, what's it called, uh, AND gates and uh, RS NOR latches up here, and the reason, well not RS NOR latch, but uh, whatever uh, register or flip-flop or whatever you want to call this and the reason that we need these I forget if I explain this or not is that we don't always want to be reading or quote-unquote reading uh, because it's uh, memory mapped IO uh, we don't always want to be reading um, out of uh, it and sending it on to the main bus so we need some uh, AND gates so this would be like a lead a read command like read this input read this input and as for up here, this is like our save command, because once again, uh, we're going to want to have the value that's sent up here uh, just stay the same, uh, no matter what happens up here. We could be like sending data all the way over there, and we just have to make sure that nothing happens. So yeah, that's the reason that we have those in there. But yeah, the way that I managed to actually uh, solve this problem is really complicated and really inefficient, and I... I'm not going to explain how I did it because odds are if I did, uh, it wouldn't help you anyway. Uh, but like, let me know if you want to know how I did it because what I did was really ridiculous. Uh, 
yeah, like just just look at that. Uh, you can sort of see the repeater uh, craziness that's going on here, but yeah. Anyways, why is that fire? Ooh, I'm gonna have to fix that. Ooh, oh, that's really bad. Okay, I'm gonna have to fix that off camera, but oh, ooh, that is oh, that's. Oh dear. Well, this is wonderful, to say the least. I guess I'm going to like move that there. And <laughs> maybe I shouldn't be doing this on camera, but ooh, that's that's really this is really bad. <laughs> Wait a minute, will this work? I think this will work. Okay, we need to update it though, so... I'm going to need a piston... And ta-da, that will update it. So now, that should work just fine, and please tell me that this can't butt it. Okay, perfect! Wow! <laughs> Uh, anyways, with that really weird engineering solution out of the way, the next task that we have on our uh, hands is to sort of set up the clock that we have right here. So the basic idea here is that uh, in terms of clock controls, this is going to be like the general on-off switch. The thing is that sometimes we're going to want to stop the clock. Uh, for instance, if we're getting something from an external device, uh, oh, that's the other thing we need to do. We need to... Uh, Remember these wires back here determine uh, where exactly the information is going to go to in terms of like, is it going to go to memory, is it going to go to the I.O., or, or is it going to go to one of the uh, expansion slots. So yeah, we're going to need to build that later. But anyways, so in case of that, uh, at least in terms, the way that we're going to do it is we're basically just going to have the whatever we're asking the question to. Uh, in the case of memory, we could do this, but it would be, like, really annoying. Uh, ooh, that's actually a kind of interesting idea. I don't think I'm going to do that until we go debugging, uh, which, by the way, that video is probably going to be at least an hour, probably two or three hours, so... And that's going to be the next video, so yeah. But hopefully we're going to be done with the computer after that. Anyways, what am I saying? Uh, when we pre when we uh, have to access one of these things, we sort of has to have to pause the clock because we're not used to having the clock go that fast. So what we'll do is we'll wait until that thing sends a signal back to us. And when that, uh, whatever it is, I.O. or uh, I was thinking about whenever you, having something that makes it so that whenever you access memory uh, it gives a certain amount of delay, that would improve our clock speed a heck of a lot and it would be awesome. And I think I'm going to do that in opposition to kind of what... Eh, I like what I have going on over here, but... Wow, I am rambling completely here. <laughs> Anyways, so... This submit uh, input button, what it's going to do is it's going to make it so that when we press it, it's basically going to uh, start up the clock again because it's being paused because it's waiting for us to send in an input. So as soon as we press this button, uh, the uh, com computer is going to start working again. So yeah. So the basic way that we're going to do this is we're going to make it so that uh, this is going to set an RS NOR latch. Because if you remember, uh, whenever we press this button, it's going to, well, if it's a set, a set reset or RS NOR latch, the way that it works is you have a set and you have a reset. And why am I explaining this? <laughs> this isn't introduction to memory. This is like five levels higher than that. <laughs> Anyways, you should know what an RS NOR latch is if you're working, like how could you get this far without watching an RS NOR latch? If you don't know what an RS NOR latch is, pause this video and look it up. Okay, <laughs> why did I even think about that? But anyways, so the thing is that, uh, let's say that I request something from the IO. 
I set the latch, and then I wait, oh, whoops, I just pressed one of my world edit hotkeys, and then I wait until someone presses submit input, and then it turns off. So this little thing right here is going to send a signal into this comparator, and out of this comparator we can just take the signal that goes into the clock design that I went over earlier. So again, if we just set this, then it's going to stop it, and you can, you're going to be able to see that if we flip the on-off switch, it's going to do that, but we can stop that with a repeater. And we're going to have some more aura snore latches along here for all of the other different, uh, what's it called, uh, oh, uh, different like expansion slots and such that we're going to use for the exact same purpose. And now, if we press the button, you'll see that the signal just goes straight through and we can use it now. Anyways, on the topic of the clock, uh, the big problem here is that we're going to need to have a system that's going to allow us to get the clock signal out of here. And we're going to be doing something rather funky for that. Uh, first of all, right here I'm actually uh, sort of setting up the clock design we have here. So we've got the redstone torch here, you remember, that's uh, going to stop us when it's off. And then, as soon as we turn it on, we need to turn on the monostable. So we're going to put that there, and we're going to put a piston there, and sure, let's set that to 4, because uh, we're going to be using 4 tick repeaters anyway, so we might as well. So then we can just string that in like that very easily. And then, we can just string that up like that. And now this should come out in just a bit. Come on, Minecraft. Oh, of course not, because uh, of this. So the thing is that uh, if we're going to want to use this fancy system that's going to be able to get us get this signal out of here in a very small amount of space, and to be really convenient uh, because uh, if we move this one block back, then uh, that's going to be coming up there rather than there, and it's going to start interfering with that. The problem is that, as you can see, it doesn't make our I.O. look that pretty, and that's sort of a priority you want to... Ooh! Aha! Oh no! Well, we can put a repeater on that. Who cares? <laughs> uh, that's kind of annoying, but anyways... Uh, Tell me if you're okay with having a wire in here, because, uh, like, that's going to affect that, but, uh, I mean, I guess it's not going to be too bad, but the thing is that, uh, like I've said before, uh, the I.O. is just such an important part of a computer, and if you want to make something good, you have to make sure that you at least have decent I.O., and it has to look good, like... Uh, this sort of area right here, uh, I'm sort of going to be pimping out uh, later, I guess. But, yeah. So, like, tell me if you think that this doesn't... If you think this is ugly, because I think this is, that this is a little ugly, but I guess we can live with it. Uh, but, yeah. Anyways, there is actually another solution to this problem that we can do that will allow us to uh, get rid of this, but the thing is that we have to move the entire thing back one, which is going to interfere with this, and as I was saying earlier, if we move this torch back, then we're going to need to put redstone on top of it, which isn't such a big deal, but it's just not neat, and I don't like non-neat stuff. But, anyway, so now that we've got all of that done, we can just come around here, and we can just take some repeaters that face the right direction. Can I okay, good. I can place repeaters, and then we can just bring some blocks along like this. And then we can just get some of these guys coming along here. And this should be enough to add up to the entire uh, clock delay. We can add more to it later, uh, but yeah. But anyways... The other thing that we're going to do is we need to make it so that this lights up, and the way that we're going to do that is we're just going to hook these wires up, because if you think about it, the only time that this is going to be on is when we need an input. So, let's just like uh, turn that off. So it tells us that we need an input, so we reset it, and it gets rid of the light. So yeah, really convenient thing that we can do there. And then we can just power this from any point, and it's going to make it so that it will power through this. So yeah, 
that's actually pretty much the entire clock done. Uh, we're going to need to eventually take this around and, oh, you just saw this pulse. Like, let's put a piston here. Ta-da! Anyways, we can probably make this a lot slower. Uh, but, yeah, anyways, the idea that I was talking about is uh, make it so the whenever we access the memory rather than the seek. So the original uh, idea that I... Oh, never mind. Just forget that I forget what I'm saying. Because <laughs> we've already done this, and I think this looks cool. But, uh... I... Nah. No, I don't think I'm going to do... Uh, I'm... So the idea that I've had, once again, is that I'm going to have like another one of these setups uh, of a sort of ping system to and hook it up to the memory. But the thing about the problem with that is that if we do it, then it's going to interfere with a pro uh, solution that I have over here, which is that uh, we're sort of going to be able to adjust the clock de delay, which I was going to talk about uh, next. And the reason that this is significant is that, uh, let's say I don't want to use the memory in a program, I can just come in here and reduce the number of repeaters in here, uh, or the, rather the number of ticks, so I could just do like that. And the clock's going to go a lot faster, and we can prioritize that stuff. But now that I think of it, uh, the other thing is that it's really complicated. Again, tell me in the comments if uh, you think that... Uh, I should uh, just, uh, if I should do like uh, both, or, because the two options I have are I could either uh, do both of them, uh, in which case I would have to do, add a complicated bit of extra hardware, or the other option that I have is uh, I could just leave it the way it is now. So again, leave in the comments if you think I should do that with the memory or not. But yeah. Anyways, uh, how long have I been recording? Uh, I can't check right now, but anyways, I think that that's more than enough for one session. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to come up to these uh, two wires that we've got going on right here. Because if you remember, these wires are going to determine uh, which, ex which sort of, uh, oh, what's it called? Uh, which external, uh, CPU external, by the way, which external device we're going to use. Uh, so, like, we could be using uh, an expansion slot, or we could be using the I.O., or we could be using the mem in memory. So what we, our first step is we're going to need to take both of these wires, and we're going to need to uh, basically make some, uh, what's it called, uh, decoders with them, and we're going to sort of use that in order to attach different things uh, like uh, exter different external devices to those different wires. For instance, uh, if we want something from I.O., then we can just string it into there. Or if we want something from uh, memory, then uh, we can like let it pass through. Like uh, we could s put like a comparator here and then uh, redstone here and then we could just say that uh, only send this pulse uh, if uh, this is on the right address, but yeah. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually build the decoders here, so yeah. I'll see you guys when I'm done, and I know this video is getting long, but I want to end this uh, computer quickly because we're so close. And Alright, we are back, and I have just finished off actually going ahead and building these decoders. So quickly, just a little bit on the function of them. The way that they basically work is that we just take the stuff coming out of the registers in a pointer, and then we're just going to come up here, and we're going to take uh, the uh, reading and writing commands uh, that, like, basically what we've been using for memory, and they now have to come into this decoder, because they're technically not just for memory, they're technically for external devices in general. So, as far as that's concerned, we just have to just plug it into a control wire up here, and that will make it so that whenever we ask for a, uh, what's it called? Uh, whenever we ask for, oh, I just went brain dead. <laughs> whenever we ask for a control, uh, whenever we need 
Oh wow, I'm... Okay, I need to think about this for a second. So whenever we actually need to do an external uh, device uh, usage in general, we actually have to use this uh, decoder. And then according to what we're pointing to, we could go to all sorts of different devices like the I.O. and the expansion slots. Now, we actually have three decoders going on, one for each of the uh, read commands that we have. So you've got one right here. This is the one for uh, the, uh, the B read, and the other one, there's two over there, one for the A write, and the other is for the A read. So this one up here is the one for the A write, and the one that I first showed you, the one down here, is the one for the A read. So yeah. That's basically uh, all I've done. I also actually haven't hooked up the, uh, what's it called, uh, these expansion slots. And I really don't feel like uh, actually doing that in this series, and the reason for that is just it's a little tedious. Uh, in the end, if we want to like add something cool onto this computer uh, in the future, like a screen or something, then we can because it's set up to do it that, but I just don't want to do it in this series and I really want to finish this thing because it's been a huge undertaking and yeah, I just want to get it over with, so yeah. Anyways, now we can talk about this thing right here. Now I was originally planning on using this as a uh, bug slash to-do list and basically what that is is uh, for when we actually go in and, oh, oops. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's why you try to keep your fingers off of Q. <laughs> but anyways, this is basically where I was planning on like recording uh, the different bl bugs that we find. But the thing is that uh, signs are just so derpy that I think I'm just going to use a sheet of paper to do this stuff. But uh, anyways, so there's a few things that I actually already know about that uh, we're going to be starting with next time. Uh, the first big one has to do with uh, the timing on the, uh, what's it called, uh, oh, the, uh, what's this bit right here called? The branching. Because we need to make it so that uh, the branching signal arrives during the next clock cycle, which is when we need it, and not during the first clock cycle. So yeah, that's going, ooh. Okay, I guess I'm going to have to solve that like that. But anyway, it's good that we're solving that now rather than later. But anyways, so next time, uh, I guess I can get rid of this. But yeah, as I've already said, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be f totally finishing this entire thing off by actually uh, getting all the timing correct on it. So yeah, that's just about everything. So I hope you guys have enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time.